Hey, good evening guys. It's Nathan and we are excited that you joined us this evening for Celebrate Recovery online here at LifePoint Church. Uh, what an amazing time we have to be able to be in his presence tonight. What an awesome opportunity that we have to take some time and really just quiet ourselves and, and take time to spend with our families, to spend with God. Um, what a shift in what we're doing uh, that this has been. Uh, so let's, let's pray before we get started tonight, and, uh, and we're going to sing together. So I know that you may be in your living room, you may be in your car, you may be um, taking a walk while you're watching this uh, tonight, but no matter where you're at, sing along with me. Um, let's sing the joy of the Lord no matter where we are. Um, and let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to ask him to be in this service, even though it's online. Uh, we, I believe that he is still uh, moving and working in hearts. He's moving and working in people, even now, as we uh, are watching this on our phone or on our TV, uh, wherever we are. We're not together in this church building, but we are together in spirit. We are still the church. So let's pray and ask God to be with us tonight. Father, we come before you tonight. We thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to come into your presence and that we have to come and be a part of your church. God, we believe that you are doing powerful and amazing things, and we just ask that you would be in this service tonight. It looks different. It feels different. But God, we know that you are here and you're working and moving in our hearts. God, we love you. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Your light, your love in the 
right now, even though we're not together, we are not alone. God is still here with us. Amen and amen. Good evening, CR family. My name's Daryl Bennett, and I'm excited that you guys are here tonight with us. You're going to hear an awesome lesson from Cheryl, and then after that, we are going to have a Zoom for small groups. If you can join us, that would be great. The attachment will be at on LifePoint page or CR page if you will go there. We also have a Sunday service, I didn't know if you knew that, but at 9.03 and 10.33, we would love for you to join and have a blessed day.
draw me again into the center of your love where I began I know that you
work through this online service. God, help us to be more like you in this time. God, we love you tonight. It's in your precious name we pray. So tonight we're going to talk about lesson 20, um, daily inventory. Principle 7 says, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and His will for my life and to gain the power to follow His will. Step 10, we'll continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admit it. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful so you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Tonight, we want to focus on the how-tos of step 10, but first, I would like to see how you did with your seven days of step 10 journaling. I know for many of you, it was the first experience in writing down your thoughts on a daily basis. I thought it would be interesting to randomly call on someone um, to have them read for the whole group. I'm just kidding. Bet you're glad you're not in church tonight, huh? So, but it is important for us to recap our day in written form, the good, the bad, and the successes of the times when we blew it. And here's why. One, when you write down the areas in which you owe amends, it will help us see if patterns are developing so that you can identify them and work on them with the help of Jesus Christ and your sponsor. Two, you can keep the amends you owe to a very short list. As soon as you write it down, you can promptly make a, um, make a plan to promptly offer your amends. And after you make the amends, that you can cross it off your journal. When you see that it is crossed off, you'll see that you're making progress. And there's such freedom in knowing that you're making progress. So some of you may have had trouble um, getting started um, writing in your journal. We're going to talk about inventory. Um, it's if it's hard to write in a journal, it might be hard to get started on your inventory. So let me give you some hints that will help you get started putting ink to the paper. One, if you start off by writing down just one thing that happened each day for which you are thankful, just one thing can get you started and it will also help you sleep better at night. Two, ask your accountability partner or sponsor to hold you accountable for writing in your journal each night. Number three is the one that my daughter-in-law is trying to teach my six-year-old grandson. She wants him to memorize Galatians 5, through 23, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Self-control is the one that my grandson needs to work on along with myself. Daily, ask yourself these questions to prompt your writing. Start each question with the word today. Today, did I show love to others? Today, did I act unloving to anyone? Today, did others see in me the joy of having a personal relationship with the Lord? If not, why not? How's my serenity, my peace? Did anything happen today that caused me to lose it? <clears throat> what was my part in it? Was I patient? Did I... What caused me to lose my patience? Do I owe anyone amends? <clears throat> Would anyone say that I was kind or good? In what ways did I act unkind? How was my faithfulness? Did I keep my word to everyone? How was my gentleness and my self-control? Did I lose my temper or speak a harsh word to anyone? During this crazy pandemic and unexpected time at home, I've lost my patience and self-control several times. I've snapped at my family because I'm in an unfamiliar situation. <clears throat> I can't control anybody's actions, um, my daughter's actions, to let me know that she's safe. 
Um, I had to stop having a self-pity party and reflect on God's goodness. I'm healthy. I have a roof over my head. I felt <clears throat> I have food in my pantry, and I'm still able to see my son and his family. God is good and faithful during these difficult times for so many. More now than other, we need to think on a daily basis what we are thankful for. As we work step 10 and principle 7, we begin the journey of applying what we've learned in the first nine steps. We humbly live daily in reality, not denial. We have done our best to amend our past. Through God's guidance, we can make choices about the emotions that affect our thinking and our actions. We start to take action, positive action, instead of constant reaction. In principle seven, we desire to grow daily in our new relationship with Jesus Christ and others. Instead of attempting to be in control of every situation and every person we come in contact with or spinning out of control ourselves, we're starting to exhibit self-control. That's the way God wants us to be. Remember, self-under control is what we are seeking. Self under God's control is what we're striving for. God has provided us with a daily checklist for our new lifestyle. It's called the greatest commandment, and it's found in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, where Jesus said, <clears throat> love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is this, love your neighbor as thyself. All the law and the prophets hang on to these two commandments. When you do your personal inventory, ask yourself, today, did my actions show what the greatest commandment tells me to do? Did I love my neighbor or others as myself? As we leave these two commandments by putting the principles into steps, actions in our lives, we will become more like Christ. We will become not hearers, but doers of God's word. James 1.22 says, Do not merely listen to the word and deceive ourselves. Do what it says. Our actions need to be consistent with our talk. You may be the only Bible that someone ever reads. That's being a real living Bible. That's how the Apostle Paul lived. He says in 1 Thessalonians 1.5, Our very lives were further proof of you, of the truth of our message. Others should see God's truth shown in our own lives. Step 10 does not say how often to take inventory, but I would like to offer three suggestions that can help keep us right on track, um, on the right road, God's road to recovery. One is do an um, ongoing inventory, two, do a daily inventory, and three, do a periodic inventory. So on the daily inventory, we can keep an ongoing inventory throughout the day. The best time that, to admit we were wrong is the exact time that we are made aware of it. Why wait? Let me give you an example. Um, last week, I snapped at my grandson. Um, I've been helping babysit so their mom can teach online, and I was immediately faced with a choice. I could admit that I was wrong. I shouldn't have snapped at Zane. He only wanted to go outside and play and make amends with him. Zane, I'm sorry for speaking so sharply. I was wrong. Or I could wait until later, risk rationalizing it away. He saw that I was busy. He had no right to ask me to play at that time. You don't have to wait until you go home, cook dinner, watch TV, and then start your journal. If you do an ongoing inventory during the day, you can keep your amends list very short. Do a daily inventory. At the end of each day, we look over our daily activities, the good and the bad. We need to search where we might have harmed someone or where we acted out of anger or fear. But once again, remember to keep your daily inventory balanced. Be sure to end good things that you did right throughout the day and not just the bad things. The best way to do this is to journal. When you actually see it written on paper, you can really tell if you're keeping up the good with the bad. Um, if you spend about 15 minutes just before you go to sleep, you can journal your day's events. Ask God to show us the wrongs that we have committed. 
Then, as promptly as we can, the next morning, we can admit them and make our amends. Do a periodic inventory. Take a periodic inventory about every three months. This is what I would like to do. I'd like to get away on a mini retreat. We'd encourage you to try it. Bring your daily journal with you. As you pray and you read through the last 90 days of your journal entries, ask God to show your areas in your life that you can improve on in the next 90 days and celebrate the victories that you've made. Now, while we would love to go away on a spa weekend, I've done this at my camper before. Um, being outside or being just away from somebody, um, even if you have to make a fire and go sit outside by yourself, um, it's very rewarding to do. By taking an ongoing and daily and periodic inventory, we can work step 10 to the best of our abilities. With God's help, we can keep our side of the street clean. Here's a few key verses to learn and to follow for step 10. Intelligent people think before they speak. What they say is then more persuasive. Proverbs 16, 23. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. Ephesians 4, 29. A wise, more mature person is known for his understanding. The more pleasant his words, the more persuasive he is. Proverbs 16, 21. A word of encouragement does wonders. Proverbs 12, 25. If I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them and could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and earth but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Step 10. Daily Action Plan. 1. Continue to take a daily inventory, and when you were wrong, promptly admit it and make your amends. Number two, summarize the events of your day in your journal. Number three, read and memorize the principal seven A verses <clears throat> in the Participants 4 Guide. Number four, work all the steps and principles to the best of your ability. The key verse for this lesson is Mark 14, 38. Watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Let's close in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you um, for giving me the tools to work my inventory daily. Thank you for the Celebrate Recovery program. Because of it, I now live my life differently, centered in your will. Lord, help me to make my amends promptly and to ask forgiveness in all my relationships. Today, help me do my part in making my relationships healthy and to continue to grow in your word. Lord, I thank you for the extra time at home and for teaching me um, that I still need to work on the fruits of the Spirit. I pray that if anyone watching needs your prayers, that they will message us. We're praying for all of you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So please don't forget to reach out to your sponsor or your accountability partner during this difficult time. Um, we would love to help get you started on your inventory. Thank you. Have a good night.